Hello, uh, this is the course of special topic on data analytics. And the topic is related to the recommender system. So in this first slide, uh, we are going to learn about the data mining stuff. So um, maybe if you already joined the data mining class, you may have some ideas about the contents. But I will try to go from the basic so everybody can understand the content. So I'm going to explain about the data. Okay? And we are going to learn about the data pre-processing. Let's say we are going to handle the missing values or you know, maybe some data redundancy. But I will not discuss all the details due to the time limitation. Yeah, we are going to learn about some possible or some basic data pre-processing. And we are going to learn about the similarity and dissimilarity. And we are going to check what is association or correlation. Yeah. Now let's begin on the first part about the data. When we deal with the recommender system, so we need to ensure that there is a user information. So user information means yeah, someone, a person. Okay? For example, here we have Alice, Bob, Charlie, Dave, Ethan. Yeah, this is just an example. And we need to have item information. Let's say if we are in the uh, Netflix, so we have the movie name, Toy Story, for example, Iron Man, maybe Spider-Man, Pororo, okay, and the Barbie, for example. And yeah, the basic idea for the recommender system, it is better to have a rating. A rating means the value that the person interests on that item. So for example, I put five. So let's say if the rating is between one until five, so five is the highest. Then, yeah. oh, this is uh, Alice give the Toy Story the highest value. So the rating is the highest based on Alice's uh, perspective. For example, Bob give the Toy Story three, then the rating is just in the middle. Yeah. So there might be some other attributes. Yeah, we will learn about the other attributes, for example, the timestamp, or maybe we can see the genre. So the Toy Story is a movie for children. Uh, it is a comedy. Okay, so those kind of things it can be explainable by the attributes. So I'm going to uh, show you other possible attributes. For example, yeah, we have the static data. We can have some dynamic data. What does it mean by static and dynamic data? For example, in the static data, we have the user and everything of the user data is static. Static means you will have no changes on the information. Okay, No change on the information. For example, name. Okay. The name, yeah, of course you, yeah, you can change your name, but most probably you will have the name uh, for long, long time. Gender. Okay. And you can also have the race. So it means yeah, the ethnics. Yeah, you are Korean. Uh, I'm Indonesian. Identity. So identity, it can represent something like the uh, or the student ID. The title. Yeah, for example, uh, you already graduate from a PhD, so you get the title doctor. 
paksa, paksa nim. Yeah. So those, those kind of things, yeah, it can be referred to the title if it is a user. But if it is an item, yeah, then there is also a title to represent yeah, the name of the item. For example, yeah, the movie, yeah, the movie title, actor, category. Yeah. So the category means the genre. It is a comedy, or maybe it is the category for children, or it is the category for uh, an adult. Yeah. The actor, who is the actor in the movie? Okay, Tom Cruise, or yeah, someone who is famous on playing the comedy, uh, Jim Carrey, for example, and etc. Date of production. So those are the static data, but we can also get the dynamic data. For example, the user, yeah, I'm going to check the status, whether the user is now an active user or inactive user. So the inactive user means the user is now uh, not active, but suddenly become active and so on. It's, yeah, it's it can be changed every year. Okay. So if the chain, there is a changes on the age, yeah, maybe this year, the user age is 30, but next year it changes to 31. And the next year it changes to 32. So the age will be changing every year. Location. So location is also a kind of uh, dynamic data. Because whenever you, uh, for example, online, yeah, uh, the IP address can be detected. So maybe you are now at home. So the IP address will be your home. If you are in the public space, then maybe you are using the mobile data. Or when you go or traveling, then the IP address will be different. So social relationship. Yeah, maybe when you watch the movie, you are alone or you are with your friends, you are with your family. Yeah. And when you do... Uh, when you watch the movie, you uh, put your emotion yeah, and so on. So you can see there are many dynamic data available here and all of them can be the data sources of the recommendation. Let's say in the transaction, as I mentioned previously, we can have the explicit rating and we can have the implicit rating. So the explicit rating is the, ex the rating itself or we can have the like or dislike. We can have the comments from the users and other things. Or yeah, we can look at the patterns from the user who browse the website. We can look at the users purchase items. We can use the number of views of the user into a kind of video, for example, in the YouTube, you can know how many viewers and etc. So this is an example from a movie lens data set. In the movie lens data set, they have uh, several table, and in the first table, uh, it shows there are one, two, three, four, so four columns. In these four columns, you can see there's a user ID. So the user ID, as I mentioned before, maybe we can represent someone's name, Alice, Bob, and etc. We have movie ID, and we have the rating, and we have the timestamp. Maybe you will ask why the timestamp is like this one. Yeah. Usually this timestamp is shown as the Unix timestamp. Okay, so if you are doing with the programming in Python, so Python has the function to directly convert or transform. It can be transformed to the common time date. Okay, so yeah, you don't need to worry about this one, but uh, this is one of the format of the timestamp. And after you have the rating like this one, you can connect to another kind of data. So this is the movie data. I have the movie ID. So if the movie ID is one, it represents the title Toy Story. 
so we can see the year of production 1995 and we can know the genre okay so this genre is adventure animation children comedy fantasy okay. if it is the movie id3 okay we can see that movie id3 Three, it is the grumpier old man. Okay, the production was in nineteen ninety five, and the genre is comedy, romance. If you look at this kind of data, so there is a separator. So you need to use some mechanism to separate those genre. Okay, so this is about the data. Now, if we want to explore more about the data. It means I can do some kind of statistical analysis. For example, yeah, I want to know how many users rate this movie, Star Wars. Okay, uh, based on the data, I can look at the numbers. There are 583 users who rate this data. And the rating mean. So among those 583 users, let's say if the rating is between 1 until 5, then yeah, the rating mean is 4.358. Is it good or bad? Okay, because it is closer to 5, then I can say it is yeah quite good. Sometimes we can do the context-based exploratory analysis what is context based exploratory data analysis uh, we can see from the right examples this is a database from imdb okay? so imdb is one website that provides a lot of movies and they give the uh, ratings and they also collect the data from the users so for example, like this one, they know the user profiles, for example, the ages. So they can categorize the ages below 18, between 18 until 29, between 30 until 44, and then 45 plus. So I want to know if there is a movie, The Shock Hang Redemption. <clears throat> so how is the profile of the raters. The raters are the user who gave the rating. So the, there are uh, 1 million users who gave the rating 10. Okay. And yeah, you can see the proportion using this kind of data visualization. And then we can also make the category based on the gender how many male and how many female. And sometimes we can also do the data analysis based on the geography. So how many users from US and then how many users from non-US and etc. We can also look at the median and then you can also look at the arithmetic mean and etc. So you can apply any statistical analysis for the exploratory data analysis. So the data pre-processing, I think you already know from the data mining class that we can do some data pre-processing techniques. For example, we can do data cleaning. We can do data integration. We can do data reduction and we can transform data now you can look at the possible problems on the data cleaning okay. for example we can ignore the missing values we can fill in the missing values we can fill in the missing values scientifically maybe using the decision tree or maybe we can use the support factor machine and etc and we need to handle the noisy data. And in the data integration, maybe we need to handle some data redundancy, okay. measure the correlation, 
for the data reduction, we have the dimensionality reduction. We have numeracy reduction. For the data transformation, we can have the normalization. We can have tokenization and discretization and yeah, okay, many more. Okay, so those are the example. So let's see just uh, uh, some methods that we can learn in this semester. Data cleaning. The data cleaning is a step to ensure the data is well prepared for creating a model. So it is due to the missing value and noisy data. So let's see with this kind of uh, data. The user A give a rating to item I1 and the rating is 1. The user A give item 2 rating 3. The user B give the item I2 rating 4. The user C give item 1 rating 3. And the user C give item 3, then the rating is 2. Okay, so when we move to this one, I can say that there, this is the table obtained from this one. It seems I have some mistake, right? This one, I A give the item one is one, A give the item two is three, B give the item two is four, C give the item one is three. Okay, this should be two, sorry. Okay. So if you have like this data, what happened? You have some missing value. Okay, let me fix this one first. So, okay, now I change this to two to fit with this example. So what is missing value? Okay. A missing value is a value that was not introduced or maybe a value was not available. What are the reasons? First, maybe users do not want to read. Okay. Or the users have not purchased the items or the user have not watched the movie. Okay. So yeah, we cannot ask the rating. So simple way to handle the amazing value, MV, is just okay, delete data, discard the data. Yeah, yeah it is practical, yeah, but uh, yeah, if it is the, the missing value is small, that's okay. But a matter of fact, it is very huge. Yeah. And the analysis of complete instances will not lead to serious bias during the inference. So if you just deal it, yeah, it will give you yeah, some uh, correct or accurate information because if <clears throat> yeah, you can just delete it, then no bias. Okay? That's a good way. It's the good method, but yeah, it sometimes uh, it is not practical due to the existing of large missing value. So MP can make performing data analysis difficult. Yeah. So the presence of MP can pose serious problems. Inappropriate handling of MP could introduce bias. Yeah. And maybe if he, the missing value is small, no problem. But if there are so many missing value and you just delete it, it can be biased. And it can result misleading conclusion and it can limit the generalizability of the research finding. It means if there are so many missing values and then you just delete it, the data will become small. Okay. 
So if the data becomes small, then yeah, of course the finding will be very limited. And the other kind of problem, it will be about the efficiency loss. Right? And the complication in handling and analyzing the data and bias okay? between the missing and the complete data. Because sometimes maybe the person do not want to rate yeah. And they want only rate the something that is interesting for them. Yeah. So this is some type of the missing value. We call it MCAR, missing completely at random. What is it? Uh, we can look at this uh, things. The MCAR, it is randomly, uh, yeah, we don't need, we, we don't know where it happens. Okay, so it is just random. So the fact that a certain value is missing has nothing to do with its assumed value and with the value of other variables. So, for example, I have this is the complete data. This, this is the eights. Okay, 25, 26. 29, 30, 30, 30, 31. So it is the user who gave the rating. So this is the complete data. I have to see this complete data. But uh, yeah, I just want to show you if it is a, the incomplete data or the missing value, if you look at this one, it is missing. Missing, 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 missing. Yeah, it is. Uh, if it is a completely at random, yeah, we cannot find out any uh, patterns. Yeah, we cannot find any behavior that might be biased from this missing value. Another type of missing value, we call it missing at random. So MAR is the values of the missing data can somehow be predicted from some of the other variables in the data set. Okay, for example, I have this complete data again. Yeah, we have the 25, 26, 29, and so on. Okay, so this is the complete data with the reading. But the incomplete data, the first data that I got is like this one. Okay, those are missing data. Hmm. This one, we have the data, but this one is missing. <laughs> Do you know why? Yeah. So we can see directly from the aids, it seems that the data is missing due to the unavailability from younger users. Okay. So the younger user, maybe, yeah, they do not want to rate. Okay. So this is the complete data. Maybe yeah, just to show if we if we have the full data, it's something like this one. But we can see this is something uh, random, but still can be predicted. Or sometimes you know when you watch movies or you buy some items, the parents, father or mother, represent the family to read the items. So the youngers cannot do the rating, but the parents will do the rating. Okay. That's possible. Okay. So we predict that, okay, the youngers cannot do the prediction. Okay. And there's another type of missing value. We call it missing not at random. We call this is missing not at random because it is the most complicated. And we need to find some kind of patterns of this one. For example, like this, we have the complete data and we have this incomplete data. Is there any pattern of this? Yeah, it is difficult to understand. Maybe, yeah, you, if you look at this one, five, four, five, four, five, four. Mm, maybe I can look at this pattern so if the rating is below than four, it is missing. 
Okay, so this is the complete data. It is, yeah, three, two, one, three, three, one. Okay, that's the possible reason. Okay, so it means, yeah, the data is missing due to the intention manner of the service providers. So they do not want to share the small rating. They want only share the high rating. Or something, maybe if you have more data, then you can figure out if the data missing based on some kind of attributes. For example, someone who live in Seoul, they have no rating. Okay. So it's also possible to detect from those aspects. Okay, I think I will just stop the video until this part and we will continue the lesson in the class. Okay, thank you very much for listening to the video and see you.